Ever found yourself puzzled by the difference between slough and biofilms? Welcome to the intriguing world of wound care. In this vast, complex field, it's crucial to understand the different components that can be present in wounds and how they impact healing. Two such components are slough and biofilms. Slough and biofilms might sound like strange, alien words, but they are actually quite common in the world of wound care. They both exist in the wound environment but serve different roles. Slough is often seen as the villain of the story, a sign of infection or delayed healing. On the other hand, biofilms can be likened to an invisible enemy, often undetectable to the naked eye, yet causing significant complications if left unchecked. Understanding these two components is akin to unlocking a secret language, allowing for more effective wound care and treatment. By the end of this video, you'll be able to tell apart slough from biofilms like a pro. First off, what's slough? Well, imagine a wound, and in that wound you see a layer of yellow or white tissue. That's slough. It's not as scary as it sounds, it's mainly composed of dead cells, fibrin, pus, and protein material. Now, you might be wondering, why does it matter? This is because slough can be a real party pooper when it comes to healing. It creates a physical barrier, like a wall standing in the way of new tissue growth. Think of it as a roadblock that prevents the wound from healing properly. It's like trying to build a house on a plot filled with debris. It's not gonna work, right? That debris needs to be cleared away first. And that's exactly what we need to do with slough in the wound bed. So, in a nutshell, slough is a barrier we need to remove for effective wound healing. Now, let's turn our attention to biofilms. So, what are biofilms? Picture this, a group of microorganisms where cells stick to each other on a surface. These microorganisms are not some random bandits. They are very organized and form a community, almost like a city. Biofilms are typically found in moist environments, including, you guessed it, wounds. Now, why should we care about these biofilms in wound care? Well, they're not just a harmless gathering of microscopic organisms. They're a protective fortress for bacteria, shielding them from antibiotics and the body's immune system. Imagine trying to invade a city with walls that are impervious to your attacks. That's the kind of challenge biofilms present. This makes them particularly problematic in wound care. They're like a stubborn stain that refuses to go away, no matter how much you scrub. Biofilms, therefore, pose a unique challenge in wound care due to their resistance to treatment. Okay, so we know what slough and biofilms are, but how do they differ? Let's start with composition. Slough is essentially comprised of dead tissue, usually formed from fibrin, white blood cells, and dead cells. It's a natural part of the body's response to injury. On the other hand, biofilms are complex dynamic communities of living microorganisms, including bacteria, fungi, and yeasts, all embedded within a self-produced matrix. Now let's talk about appearances. Slough typically presents as a yellowish or white substance, often moist and stringy or clumpy, found on the surface of the wound. However, Biofilms can be various colors, ranging from clear, white, yellow, gray, green, or even brown, depending on the types of microorganisms present. They can appear shiny and slimy, or even be invisible to the naked eye. And what about their roles in wound healing? Slough is a sign that the body is working to heal the wound, but it needs to be removed to allow for new healthy tissue to form. Biofilms, on the other hand, can actually inhibit wound healing. They form a protective barrier over the microorganisms, making them resistant to antibiotics and the body's immune response, leading to chronic inflammation and delayed wound healing. Finally, let's consider treatment strategies. Slough can be removed using various methods like mechanical debridement, enzymatic debridement, or autolytic debridement. Each of these methods has its pros and cons and should be chosen based on the patient's overall health, the wound type, and the wound location. Biofilms, however, require a more aggressive approach. They need to be thoroughly disrupted and then treated with antibiotics. Plus, wound care professionals need to stay vigilant to prevent their reformation. And there you have it. Slough and biofilms, two critical components in wound care, each with their unique challenges and treatment strategies.